Recorded na. Hindi mag-handog. Yan na. Okay, start. Good evening to all the viewers out there. Welcome to... Kudala Richmond Benedict J. He will discuss about the implication of five factor or ocean model of personality and the implication of the triarchic theory of intelligence. The game master, Moretta Crizel D. She will tell us more about intelligence, the building blocks of skills, and Sternberg's hierarchic theory of intelligence. The assistant presentation director, Baryoga Rubilin R. She will talk about the cognitive resources theory and the emotional intelligence. Presentation Director, Cabanella Joshua S. He will help us visualize the building blocks of skills and will discuss how to squelch the creativity of direct reports. Treasurer, Cesa Joseph Luis G. He will be explaining further the Myers-Briggs type indicator, and the limitations of MBTI. Assistant Secretary, Taya, you will elaborate the details of the The assistant group leader, Karagan Bea Trisha S. She will be educating us about the personality traits and leadership and the five factors of ocean model. Last but not the least, the group leader, Argana Jean Or. She will discuss the leadership attributes, the implications of emotional intelligence and its building blocks of skills, and the summary. For better understanding, here are the topics that our guests will discuss. our guests. Don't you think so? I definitely agree. Now let's open up the topic with a quote. What's your thoughts okay. on words? What's your words for they become actions? What's your actions for they become habits? What's your habits for they become character? What's your character for it becomes your destiny? That's really deep, but completely accurate. Our thoughts influence the way we speak and act. And 
will eventually define our future. So to all the aspiring leaders out there, start evaluating your thoughts. Will it help you become a good leader in the future? Now let's start the presentation with Ms. Bea Carolina. Thank you, Jean. Let us discuss the personality trait and leadership. According to Robert Hagan, personality can be defined when looking at two aspects. First would be the public reputation or our impression for how we see others. As a leader or as a person, it can be a description or an evaluation. This is how we perceive an individual. Second would be identity or how a person perceives himself or herself as a leader. You may see yourself as loud and fun, but others can describe you as quiet or shy. But when looking at leadership effectiveness, public reputation plays an important role. Most research about the relationship of personality and leadership success and effectiveness is based on trait approach. But first, what is trait? Trait is the recurring trend in a person's behavior. This can be inferred from consistent pattern of behavior and reliably measured by personality inventories. Trait approach states that a person behaves based on her or his strengths or weaknesses. It is useful in explaining why people act fairly consistent in different situations. To explain this, I would use an analogy to seasonal weather patterns in the Philippines. We know how hot it gets every March to May of the year. We also know that May to September are, is the rainy season. And November to February are the cold season or the Christmas season. We can do a good job of predicting what the weather will generally be like in January, even though any prediction for a particular day would not be perfect. It is very similar in the way how two different people differ in a particular trait. It can help us predict more accurately how they will tend to respond in a variety of situations. Traits play an important ro role on how we people behave on external factors that can affect a leader's personal trait. First is the weak situation or a situation that is unfamiliar to them. Second would be a strong situation or a situation which is governed by a set of rules, demands, and policies that can minimize the effect that traits have on your behavior. Strength of relationship between personality traits and leadership effectiveness is inversely related to the relative strength of the situation. That is, personality traits are more closely related to leadership effectiveness in weak situations. FFF or Ocean Model is a categorization scheme. Most of the trait that you would use to describe someone is in this category. This is openness to experience. Leaders that are high in this category seek new experience. They tend to be strategic, imaginative, and can see the bigger picture. They are usually the CEOs of the company. Leaders that are low in this category prefers the, the safer way and always uses proven methods. They tend to be practical, tactical, and have narrower interests. Second would be consensuousness, or the behavior that concerns the people's approach to work. People who are high in this category tend to be organized, thus making them a more effective leader, while people who are low in this category tend to be spontaneous, impulsive, and like to bend the rule. And they are usually under our on the artistic side of the wheel. They can be graphic designers or musicians. The third category is extroversion, or the behavior that is more likely exhibited in a group setting and is concerned with getting ahead in life. This appears when someone is trying to influence or control others. People that are high in extroversion is most likely to be outgoing, competitive, opinionated, and self-confident. 
while people who are low in this category prefers to work alone. Fourth would be agreeableness, which concerns to how a leader gets along with others. People who are high in this category tends to be charming, diplomatic, empathetic, and approachable, while people who are low in this category tend to be insensitive, socially clueless, grumpy, pessimistic, and the jobs that are associated with this are judge, referees, and police officers. Somehow, this category is related to approval and validation because the others are working hard to be liked by others. And the fifth category would be neuroticism, which concerns on how people react to stress, change, failure, or personal criticism. This is apparent during the times of uncertainty and crisis. So people who are low in this category seems to be calm, optimistic, and doesn't take mistakes personally. While people who are high in this category seems to be passionate, intense, moody, anxious, loses temper when stressed. So we have to know that the followers mirror the leader's emotion under the period of high stress. And people with low neuroticism is more likely to be an effective leader because they can handle stress very well. That's a wonderful insight. Thank you, Jean. Now let us call on Mr. Kodala to further explain the implication of the ocean model. Today we're going to talk about the implications of the ocean model. So first, personality traits help explain leaders and followers' tendencies to act in consistent ways over time. They tell us why some leaders appear to be dominant versus deferent, outspoken versus quiet, planful versus spontaneous, warm versus cold, and so forth. Behavioral manifestation of the personality traits are often exhibited automatically and unconsciously. People high in extroversion, for example, will often maneuver to influence or lead whatever groups or teams they are a part of without even thinking about it. Although personality traits predispose us to act in certain ways, we can nonetheless learn to modify our behaviors through experience, feedback, and reflection. The ocean model is useful in personality researchers currently embrace some form of this model because it has provided a useful scheme for categorizing the findings of the personality leadership performance research. Another useful method is it helps profiling leaders wherein, according to this profile, the leaders will generally come across to others as self-confident, goal-oriented, competitive, outgoing, eager to be the center of attention, but also distractible and a poor listener and calm under pressure, reasonably warm and approachable, moderately planful, rule-abiding and earnest, and a pragmatic tactical thinker. And lastly, it appears universally applicable across cultures, people from Asian, Western European, Middle Eastern, Eastern European, and South American cultures seem to use the same five personality dimensions to categorize, profile, or describe others. Not only do people from different cultures describe others using the same five-factor framework, these dimensions all seem to predict job and leadership performance across cultures. Personality traits have different purpose, such as it can be reliably categorized into the five major of the FFM, are good measures of leadership potential, can be used to make predictions about typical behavior at work, tend to be difficult to change, they are exhibited automatically and without conscious thought, and predispose people to act in certain ways. But the behaviors can be modified through the experience, feedback, and reflection. That is a very profound thought. I agree. Now let's discuss the personality types and leadership. And our guests for the topic are Mr. Sessa and Mr. Cabanella. The building blocks of skills, competencies, skills, behaviors, knowledge, and experience are easier to change because these factors changes through time 
through experiences, feedbacks, and actions. Well, analytic, practical, and creative intelligence, personality traits and preferences, values, interests, motives, and goals are more difficult to change because those are what will define us and how we interact with the world. Personality is shaped by early life experiences and tend to stay stable over time. Therefore, whatever factor it can be on building and improving skills, simply growing older can mean significant personality changes. As we mature, we become more agreeable and develop greater emotional and mental stability. As stated by famous cartoonist and animated filmmaker, Charles Jones, each character represented a trait that resides in me. This is very interesting. A trait is something that can be repressed or released within oneself. These traits joined together are what makes a personality. Now, types can be differentiated from traits in the sense that types can be categorized unlike traits. Quite confusing. An example of this is a person being shy. A person that has a personality type of being shy frequently shows traits that revolve around his or her personality type, like being awkward around tense situations. To sum it up, a trait can be seen as a part of a personality, and a type can be considered as a categorized personality. So for the next topic, we have Myers-Briggs Type Indicator, or MBTI-1. The MBTI is often used in college level leadership and adult education courses, formal leadership training programs, and various team building interventions. There are also books and articles that have been published about how the MBTI can be used to better understand oneself, co-workers, partners in intimate relationships, children, and educational and occupational choices. People also differ in the following preference dimensions, such as the extroversion and introversion dimension, which is concerned with where the people get their energy. Some leaders are naturally gregarious and outgoing. Their spontaneous sociability makes it easy for them to strike up conversations. Meanwhile, introverted leaders prefer to think things through and announce only final decisions. And followers may have a difficult time understanding the process such a leader used to reach his or her conclusions. Next, the sensing and intuition dimension, which is concerned with how the people look at data. Leaders who prefer the sensing mode like facts and details, the focus of information gathering concerns, the real, actual, literal, specific, and the person. In contrast, intuitive leaders tend to be innovative and conceptual, and they're more comfortable with their hunches and inspirations. Myers-Briggs Type Indicator or MBTI2. So the next dimension is the thinking and feeling dimension, which is concerned with No, sir. What happened? Yes. Uh, your son, please. <clears throat> then that's nakalagot to, ah. Upload natin to. This is the first support that I will record totally, no? As a whole. Oi, walang nagmute. 
thinking and judging could be categorized as an ISPJ type. What are the limitations of MBTI? First, it was based on the theory of Jungian psychological types, which has never been proven. Second, the four preference dimensions omit critical aspects of personality, such as neuroticism. Neuroticism refers to one of the big five higher order personality traits in the study of psychology. Individuals who score high on neuroticism are more likely than average to be moody and to experience such feelings as anxiety, fear, anger, frustration, etc. Third, more people are likely to exhibit characteristics associated with happy words than they are to exhibit characteristics solely associated with extraversion or introversion. Fourth, types are not stable over time. Some research indicates that at least one letter in the four-letter type may change in half the people taking the test in as little as five weeks. Data also show major developmental changes in distribution of types with age, and uh, the fourth effect occurs when people tend to give high accuracy ratings to descriptive statements that are personally flattering but so vague that they could apply virtually to anyone. Wow, I learned a lot from that. Do you know your MBTI, Bea? Mine is Commander or ENTJ. What about you, G? I would like to take the test after our reporting. But moving on, our next topic would be intelligence and leadership. Now let us give the floor, or rather, our screen to our guests. Good evening, everyone. My name is Alvoreta, and I will be reporting about intelligence and leadership. But before we discuss regarding intelligence, let me give you a short background about the relationship between intelligence and leadership before that. Around 1115 BC in China, where the first formal linkage between intelligence and leadership was established. They used standardized tests to determine which citizens would play key leadership roles in the, in the institutions they had to set up to run the country. Way back to World War World War I in the United States, they used intelligence tests to identify potential leaders, and to a large extent, this use of tests continues until today. Over 100 years of com comprehensive and systematic research provides overwhelming evidence to support the notion that general intelligence plays a substantial role in human affairs. To put into other contexts, given by Given by these backgrounds, they value intelligence when it comes to leadership. They made sure that the leader possesses a great intelligence that will lead them. What do we mean if we hear the word intelligence? Mind, brain, intellect, reasoning, and so on. It defines as persons all around effectiveness in activities directed by thought. What does this definition of intelligence have? Intelligence have to do with leadership. Research has shown that more intelligent leaders are faster learners, make better assumptions, deductions, and inferences, better at creating a compelling vision, and developing strategies to execute their vision or reality, can develop better solutions to problems, can see more of, of the primary and secondary, secondary implications of their decisions, and are quicker on their feet than leaders who are less intelligent. Intelligence are necessary for the leaders to have, so they can do better in their job as they will lead a certain institution or the country itself. However, intelligence alone is not enough to guarantee leadership success. Like what Peggy Moonan quoted that, good brains don't necessarily translate into good, good judgment. There are still smart people that make poor leaders compared to less intelligent ones. Nevertheless, many leadership activities, activities seem to involve some degree of decision-making and problem-solving ability, which means a leader's intelligence can affect the odds of leadership effectiveness in many situations. Next slide, please. 
Building block of skill. Intelligence is relatively difficult to change. Like personality, it is also an, an unseen quality and can be inferred only by observing behavior. Moreover, intelligence does not affect behavior equally across all situations. Some activities, such as following simple routines, put less of a premium on intelligence than others, nor does our, intel our definition of intelligence imply that intelligence is a fixed quantity. Although heredity plays a role, intelligence can be modified through education and experience. It is possible to, en to enhance your intelligence through education and, and experience as you are willing to continue to learn and try to solve some problems that you may encounter. Intelligence is also is also part of a person's public reputation. We often label others as being bright, smart, creative, slow, or dumb. And these attributes are closely associated with someone's level of intelligence. Next slide, please. theory of intelligence. It is one of the most comprehensive and compelling theories of intelligence developed and tested over the past, past 30 years. It focuses on what a leader does when solving, mental, when solving complex mental problems, such as how information is combined and synthesized when solving problems, what assumptions and errors are made. According to the theory, there are three basic types of intelligence. First is analytic intelligence. It is a general it is a general problem solving ability and can be assessed using standardized mental abilities tests. It is necessary for the leaders and followers as they tend to be quick learners, do well in school, see connections between issues, and have the ability and have the ability to make accurable deductions, assumptions, and inferences with relatively unfamiliar information. However, many people many people do well in standardized tests, but not in but not in life. And that is practical intelligence. People who are not good in standardized tests, tests but develop ingenious or innovative solutions to practical problems. As Stenberg and his associates describe a situation in which students in which schools are having a difficult time to pass to pass in a in standardized test, yet consistently found ways to defeat the school's elaborate security system. In this situation, the students possess possessed a relatively high level of practical intelligence or street marks. This intelligence was not usually known but considered one. To be specific, practical intelligence involves knowing how how things get done and how to do them. Lastly, creative intelligence. It is the ability to produce work that is both novel and useful. Novel ideas were the Define as ideas that are common and given by only a few people. People. Useful ideas were defined as ideas that are feasible and that solve the problem. One of the best examples given by Stenberg is the scientist who designed who designed the spirit and opportunity mission to Mars were given a budget that was that was considerably smaller than those of previous missions to Mars. Yet they are challenged to develop two spacecraft that had more capabilities than the Fat Finder and Viking Lander. Their efforts with spirit and opportunity were a sounding success, due in part to some novel solutions based on the land of spacecraft, both, both balloon system, and to explore the surrounding area, both were mobile rovers. Due to their creativity and intelligence, they made such a great and unique invention. Two interesting questions creativity concerned the role of intelligence and the assessment of creativity, creative ability. Assessing creativity is no simple matter. There are two types to assess creativity. And the number one is divergent thinking. It is the process of thinking that explores multiple, multiple, multiple possible solutions in order to create ideas and the convergence
divergent thinking, it is the process of figuring out a concrete solution to any problem, a straightforward process that focuses on figuring out the most effective the most effective answer to a problem. Although Stenberg and his associates showed that it, that it is possible to rely, reliably judge the relative creativity of, their, of different responses, judging criti creativity is more difficult than scoring a convergent test. The best research available indicates that, that analytic intelligence and creativity are related, but the relationship is imperfect. Some level of analytic intelligence seems necessary for creativity, but having a high level of analytic intelligence is no guarantee that a leader will be creative. And like practical intelligence, creativity seems to be specific to certain fields and subfields. This is the end of my report. Once again, I'm Prisal Boretta, and thank you for listening. <laughs> So for the next topic, we will talk about the implications of the triarchy theory of intelligence. Leadership effectiveness or emergence is positively correlated with analytic intelligence. Sometimes personality is much more predictive or leadership emergence and effectiveness than analytic intelligence. Leadership situations that are relatively routine or unchanging or that require specific in-depth product or process knowledge may place more importance on personality and practical intelligence than analytic intelligence. In certain cases, analytic intelligence may have a curvilinear relationship with leadership effectiveness wherein when differences in analytic intelligence between leader and followers are too great. Communications can be impaired, a leader's intelligence can become an impediment to being understood by subordinates. An alternative explanation for the curvilinear relationship between analytic intelligence and leadership effectiveness may have to do with how stress affects leaders' subordinate interactions. Leaders can boost the creativity throughout their groups or organizations in many ways, but particularly through selecting creative employees and providing opportunities for others to develop their creativity. Further intervention the motivation and incentives for others are conductive to creativity and providing at least some guidance or vision about the creative product or output should be should look like to improve the group and organizational factors affecting creativity leaders should be mindful that various sort of incentives or rewards can have various effects on creativity wherein certain types of motivation to work are more conducive to creativity than others. Research has shown that people tend to generate more creative solutions when they are told to focus on their intrinsic motivation for doing so, rather than on the extrinsic motivation. Another one is that creativity can be hindered if ideas will be evaluated, and this tends to reduce the number of creative solutions generated. Perhaps because of a generally shared belief in the value of critical thinking and of subjecting ideas, to intense scrutiny and evaluation. And lastly, in order to develop new products and services, the level of turnover should be low and goals should be clear. In teams with unclear goals, we successfully develop new or novel products, but these products may have low marketability or usefulness. <laughs> Table 6.3. In particular, it's how to scratch the creativity of direct reports, way in which leaders can see for the creativity of their followers. Um, number one, take away all discretion and autonomy. Taking away all discretion and autonomy may lead to decreasing employee satisfaction, feeling of being unable to freely decide, and unreasonable discretion discretion can make followers inefficient and unhappy towards a certain project or job. Number two, create fragmented work schedules. Creating fragmented work schedules can be crucial to followers because it limits their time to fully come up with new creative and clever ideas. Number three, 
provide insufficient resources. Without sufficient resources, every followers or employee will struggle to come up with new, creative, and innovative ideas. Uh, number four, focus on short-term goals. This is and depends with situation type of way to stifle the creativity of the followers. It will not give the followers enough time and space to think out of the box and to do something different. Uh, number five, create tight timelines and rigid processes. The problem might be the way deadlines or tasks are structured. Followers can only do their best work if they have supportive and organized environment to work in. Um, number six, courage, collaboration, and coordination. Collaboration and coordination is important because it is joint action of people working toward the same end. And last, keep people happy. How to keep people happy? Simple. To motivate and acknowledge their work will have a big impact and we tend to maximize time and effort for the benefit of the company. Thank you. Emotional the term emotional intelligence can be attributed to two psychologists Peter Salvi and John Mayer, who studied why some bright people fail to be successful. Salvi and Mayer discovered that many of them run into trouble because of their lack of interpersonal sensitivity and skills, and defined emotional intelligence as a group of mental abilities that help people to recognize their own feelings and views of others. The ability model focuses on how emotions affect how leaders think, decide, plan, and act. This model defines emotional intelligence as four separate but related abilities, which include the ability to accurately perceive one's own and other emotions. Second, the ability to generate emotions to facilitate thought and action. Third, the ability to accurately understand the causes of emotions and the meanings they convey. And fourth, the ability to regulate one's emotions. According to Parupo, Mayer, and Salovey, some leaders may be good at receiving emotion and leveraging them to get results through others but have difficulties regulating their own emotions. Or they can be good at understanding the causes of emotion but not as good at perceiving others' emotions. The ability model is not intended to be an all-encompassing model of leadership but rather supplements the ocean and triarchic models of intelligence. Next slide is the mixed models. Mixed model provides a much broader, more comprehensive definition of emotional intelligence. Mixed model of emotional intelligence has been much more popular with human resource professionals and in the corporate group than the ability model. Research shows that the mixed model assesses the same characteristics as the ocean model and is no more predictive of job performance and other important job outcomes than ocean personality assessments. For the abilities and models of emotional intelligence, it focuses on how emotions affect the leaders to decide, act, think, and plan. Goldman's mixed models represent the aspects of an individual's personality, while Barron's mixed models refers to the ability to affect the emotions and behavior of other people. For the perceiving emotions, self-awareness by Goldman refers to the leader's capacity to understand and recognize their own emotions. In simple words, Leaders know what they are feeling in the moment. It can be used as preferences to guide decision making, having an assessment of his or her abilities, and a well grounded sense of self confidence. Intrapersonal from bar on these models are most likely to accurately perceive, understand, and accept oneself. 
having awareness and understands one's emotions, constructively and effectively experiences one's emotions, self-reliant and free of emotional dependency on others. Next, managing emotions. Self-regulation by Goldman has to do on how leaders manage their own disrupted and negative feelings, whether they recover quickly from upsets or they can stay calm during crisis and ability to adapt in changing circumstances. For the adaptability, leaders objectively validate one's feelings and think external reality, ability to adjust and adapt the feelings of others and effectively solve problems with potential and effective solutions. The third one is using emotions. Motivation, the mixed model of Goldman, has to do on ability to start off with a set of clear goals, and they are most likely to lead and jump into new opportunities and sticking to oneself's values and integrity. For the stress management, it refers on how leaders effectively and constructively manage and control their emotions. The next one is understanding emotions. Empathy and social skills of Goldman's model refers to utilizing emotional factors in order to achieve goals and inspire others. Manage relationship and inducing desired response to them. While in their personal and general mood refers to the ability of leaders to establish and maintain relationship with others and being able to relate to them and enjoy oneself with others. The comparison between the Ocean model and Goldman's model. In terms of self-awareness, Goldman's model is all about knowing what was oneself's emotions or feeling and understanding the impact of those moods have on others. While Ocean's model in this category is self-conscious, modest, and warm. For the self-regulation, Goldman's model is about redirecting and controlling one's emotions and anticipating consequences before acting on impulse. While Ocean's model in this category is about self-discipline, emotionally sensitive, and impulsive. For the motivation, Goldman's model is about utilizing the emotional factors of leaders to achieve goals, persevere in the face of obstacles, and enjoy the learning process. While the Ocean's model in this category are assertive, active, and vulnerable. For the empathy, Goldman's model is about sensing the emotions of others and utilizing emotional factors to achieve goals, while the Ocean's model in this category are straightforward, emotionally sensitive, altruistic, and modest. Lastly, for the social skills, Goldman's models are about inspiring others, having team capabilities, cooperation, and managing relationships. While Ocean's model in this category are cooperative, active, and excitement seeker. For the first one, Mayor, Son of Bay, and Caruso's Emotional Intelligence Test. This aims to measure the ability model of emotional intelligence, which are perceiving emotions, facilitating thoughts, understanding emotion, and managing emotions. The second one, we have power on self, self and other, youth, and organizational measures, emotional intelligence. Lastly, our final way of measuring emotional intelligence is Goleman's Emotional Competence Inventory, or ECI for short. The ECI is a 360-degree tool designed to assess the emotional competences of 
individuals and organizations. It is based on the emotional competencies identified by Dr. Daniel Doleman. Implications of emotional intelligence. The first one is sometimes people can be extremely ineffective when their thoughts, feelings, and actions are misled. I'll explain it in the form of an example. A leader can experience family problems or any kind of problems during work. This could keep him distracted and worried that he may not be able to focus on his task. This may result to less effectivity in influencing his followers. And it could even lead to making bad decisions. So that's how emotion can make people ineffective. That's the disadvantage of it. When someone is bothered, tasks are affected. Second, popularizing the idea that non-cognitive abilities play important roles in leadership success. By the way, these non-cognitive abilities could be stress tolerance, assertiveness, empathy, and more. For you to better understand, would you rather hire a person who has excellent critical thinking skills but can figure out how to deal with stress, or a person who still needs training but excellent in stress tolerance? Choosing the second person can be more effective and efficient at work. Yes, he still needs training, but if you train that person well, it will give more benefits to the company. That's why non-cognitive abilities are also important. Third is bringing emotion back to the workplace. We already know that leaders influence their followers. And by that, it's to motivate, not just give tasks. In motivating them, emotions will be used and this can help the team to achieve their goals faster. And fun fact, Leaders who empathize and get along with others are more likely to be successful. The fourth is to order its employees' reactions to job insecurity and their coping ability towards stress when threatened with job loss. If you're familiar with the phrase high IQ, then it's similar to having high EQ. IQ is based on reasoning skills or using your brain. On the other hand, EQ focuses on emotions or feelings. People with high level of EQ or emotional quotient can easily cope towards stress. However, people with low level of EQ find it's hard to cope or in Filipino, And last, EQ attributes are personality traits and would be difficult to change using training. It means it is part of your personality. It is part of who you are. So changing it would take time. You need to go to a program to watch videos, role plays, and other experiential exercises to help you regulate your emotions. As I said earlier, it takes time and practice to have higher EQ. This is the building box of skills, including emotional intelligence. In this figure, the first layer focuses on your personality and your character. This is the most important stage in building skills because it will be difficult for you to excel at things that is out of your interest. On the second layer, it involves knowledge and experience. After figuring out what your interests are, you start learning and understanding about that specific field. And on the third layer, after exercising and practicing, you develop your skills. For you to understand it better, I'll give you an example. You discover that 
Being a leader is kinda interesting. That is layer one. Figuring out your interest that fits your personality and is also right for your EQ. You will then acquire knowledge in a form of discussion or advices. Or you understand it further by means of having an experience about it. And that is layer two. After training and practicing on good leadership, you master good leadership skills. And that is layer three, the final layer of building back skills. That is a very fruitful discussion. That is so true. Now, why don't you summarize it? Jean, would you do the honor? Thanks, Bea. To summarize the discussion, to accomplish goals, a leader should influence his followers using his personality, intelligence, and emotional intelligence. We often define personality as one's behavior, but in reality, it is a broad topic with a lot of meanings. Personality also have a positive correlation with leadership success. Analytic intelligence, practical intelligence, and creative intelligence theories help in understanding intelligence. And lastly, using emotional intelligence to influence followers is more effective. So to all the aspiring leaders out there, start asking yourself, do I really like this? Is leadership part of my personality? Because just like what I mentioned from the start, it will all start from your thoughts. With that, I guess our audience are ready to play your game. Game Master, you can now take the spotlight. The screen is all yours. Okay, before we play the code, can I butt in? Can, can I butt in before we play the code? Okay, while people are joining the Kahoot, I'd like just I just like to add some some concerns, huh? uh, some issues. Can I? Hey, group leader, can I can I join the discussion? Sir, you people. Okay. And this topic is very important because this is personal. This is personal level, mostly, no? especially for you because all of you are aspiring to be leaders someday. And, you know, one lesson that you should remember about this is that, uh, good lesson, for instance, is that there are different kind of intelligence. So if you have a classmate or you know somebody who is poor in academics, have low grades, don't laugh at him because he might be having a different kind of intelligence. He's more intelligent than you in some other kind of intelligence. Like, for instance, Mars Bruno. So I, I presume that Mars Bruno doesn't have, uh, I mean, this is just a presumption, huh? doesn't have a good academic background. But he has a very creative intelligence, a high creative intelligence, huh? that he has uh, $9 million or billion dollars assets because of his singing. So in other words, do not underestimate people who have no well, poor academic background because they might be having different kind of intelligence. With that, uh, with that realization, we should learn to respect other people. See, that's one lesson that you should uh, remember. No? Another is, another lesson that I'd like to impart to you, I will not repeat some lessons that have been stated already by our guests, no? but uh, let me repeat this one lesson. For instance, especially if you go to your first job, no? you will do, be doing some psychological tests. And then unfortunately, you did not get the job. Don't feel bad about it. It doesn't mean that you're bad, you have a psychological problem. No, it doesn't mean that way. It only means that the position that you are applying is different, is not fitted for your psychological, uh, psychological uh, way of thinking, for instance, no? for the, in, the psycho, in, in your psychological exam, for instance. No? For instance, you are an introvert but you applied for a salesman's position. So somebody else applied for a salesman position which is, who is an extrovert. So the one who is an extrovert will be hired, see? In other words, uh, everything being equal. 
In other words, it's not about you. It's about the position and your psychological composure. So don't feel bad about it. Huh? Kasi uh, I might hear, so you, uh, if you are not aware of this, you might feel that you are abnormal. See? In Filipino parlance. Huh? But it's not being like that. No? Another thing is this IQ versus EQ. You discuss emotional intelligence, right? That's EQ. Uh, that's EQ actually in a common parlance, no? emotional quotient. Now, when you talk of emotional quotient, it's being compared to intelligent quotient, intelligence quotient. No? Now, let me first discuss about emotional quotient. No? There are actually two basic ways no? to, to manage your emotional quotient. One, you should realize that emotional quotient is about knowing yourself and managing yourself, okay? Knowing when you are angry, knowing when you are tired, knowing when you are afraid, you should manage yourself on, under those circumstances. That's emotional quotient. And that's, that's on your part, no? Emotional quotient also has a portion where you must know the feeling of other people, again, knowing, no? The feeling of other people. And then at the same time, Know how you will react or how you will inter, interact with that people under those kind of circumstances, under those kind of feelings. Now, if you have the knack of knowing yourself and knowing the feeling of other people and knowing what to do given those feelings, then you have very good emotional intelligence. And I tell you, as to the question is, which one is better, high IQ or high EQ? Well, basically... IQ, we cannot do anything about it already. It's biological, no? genetic. No? It's genetic. But uh, EQ, one thing good about EQ is that you can learn how to improve your EQ. It's just like leadership. No? Leadership are not inborn. Leadership, leaders are made. No? Therefore, you can learn leadership skills and then become a good leader someday. So that's the beauty of EQ. You can learn how to improve your EQ. No? So which one is important? Well, I would say that uh, everything be doing equal. No? All of you have uh, an, uh, an average uh, IQ, like say your IQ is about 100 and above. No? Then it's better that you have a good EQ because a good EQ will make you relate with other people better and understand yourself better. Remember, class, huh? take note that we are basically animal. We are the highest form of animal, so, but we are basically animal. So we have our own animalistic instinct. Now, if you don't have your control of this animalistic instinct, you'll always be in trouble. You'll be, acquired, you'll be charged of sexual harassment and all those things. No? Because you don't know yourself and you don't know how to manage yourself. That's being poor in EQ, right? See? That's why it's very important that you... You must know yourself. You must have a very high EQ, no? And finally, I'd like to I'd like to remind you that um, this ocean model very important. I want you to master that ocean model discussion, you know, because uh, these are the attributes or characteristics that are needed in in your in your future career, no? Like for instance. This openness, no? openness, consensusness, openness to new ideas, of consensusness, extroversion, and agreeableness. All you have to do is to improve them. Improve. It, it's, uh, the way to do it is just to improve it. Put positive, positive, positive. Be more open. Be more consensusness like that. No? But on neuroticism, the end, no? don't, don't put positive neuroticism. It should be lowered. Because neuroticism is uh, being too sensitive, being too unstable. No? If you are too sensitive in everything, no? you, you will appear like neurotic. And so you cannot handle small things, uh, problems, because you are unstable. No? You cry easily. No? You'll, uh, you worry too much, things like that. That's why, class. When I ask you to elect a group leader who is a petics, so to speak, petics leader, no? 
I my intention was really to get a leader who has a very low neuroticism, somebody who can handle problem easily. Given big big problems, it's just it's, it's just like a guy who would say, "Okay, we'll just handle it uh, sooner or later." Meantime, we'll just enjoy it. We'll just enjoy it. We'll just make fun. It will be okay tomorrow. We'll do that. Things like that. But if you get somebody who is very high, who has very high neuroticism, you know what will happen? Maybe he'll start crying. Maybe he'll be shouting. Yeah. That's why leaders who have low neuroticism is better. That's why you improve everything in the ocean model. OCEA, improve it, plus, plus, plus. But on the neuroticism, you, you reduce it. That's how we have to improve the, uh, the ocean model, no? Okay, the ocean, yeah, the attributes under the ocean model. Okay? Anyway, let's go now to Cahoots. Okay, Cahoots, can you flash the Kahoot in the, in the screen? Everyone join Kahoot, huh? Okay, we are now 14. Your name plus the group number, huh? Okay. May I have the sound, please, of the code? I like the classic sound, huh? Classic sound. Tintin, where's your group? Don't tell me you are removed from your group. That's why you don't write your group, huh? You did not write your group number. Okay. You are actually uh, 19 now, no? 19. Okay, but you are 35 all in all. So that means my 35 minus 8, it will be around uh, 20, 20, 27, right? 27. Okay, so you're 21. Maybe three more will start. Huh? Three more will start. Game Master, can you put the sound of the code? I like to hear it. Sige na to open yung sound. Ah, okay. No problem. Let's go ulit yung ano share tray. Tapos lagay mo include system something before mo share. Ano, uh, ulitin mo ulit yung share tray mo, tanggalin mo tapos include mo yung system audio. May nakalagay. Oh, na, pa. You're doing it right now. Ayan po. Ayan, that's it. Ayan, na. Thank you po. Okay. You're now eating, Okay, this group has the honor of being uh, the first group in the full report will be uploaded in the different Let's see how the global audience will react. If I, if I upload this in my dependency study, this report will become a model of other reports. Huh? A other report is in that, like Mr. Dutt. No? I will probably accept your report and I will take them and watch them. So we're not going to be. Come on. Okay, join. Come on. Come on. Join, huh? Wait. Okay, you, you may start. Anyway, it's not growing anymore. Okay, you may start now. Come on. Start. Leadership at the moment. 
FFMR ocean model is a categorization scheme in most traits that you would use to describe someone is categorized here. True or false? <laughs> Ability model provides a much broader, much more comprehensive definition of emotional intelligence. Scenario is leading, huh? Scenario of this side. Does experience easier to change according to the building blocks of school? Blue or fall? The ocean model is not useful in personality research. True or false? Thoughts is included as a branch in Mayor Salovey Caruso Emotional Intelligence. Intelligence. It's a general problem solving ability and can be assessed using standardized mental abilities tests. process of thinking that explores multiple possible solutions in order to create ideas.
What's your thoughts for they become words? What's your character for it becomes your destiny? Was said by... Okay, number three, Kit Kat to four. Number two, Jam. And number one, who's number one? Casey Fox. Okay. Okay, Casey, number one. Okay. Okay, so yun, ah. Uh, this group is a uh, very innovative report, no? Recorded, tapos uh, parang ginawa talaga nila, parang vlogger sila, no? Okay, so I recorded this. It can be seen already in the in the in our in our my team channel. Let's see the reaction. And I'm I'm trying to study whether I can upload this in a uh, in YouTube channel. Because it's a bit too hard, no? To think about it, to upload, no? If I can, if I can, or if I can, I can, or if I can, no? Okay, but uh, this is already recorded and it's already presented in the teams channel natin. May, may channel tayo sa team. Okay. And uh, I presume that will be a lot of reactions. No? Okay. So, uh, group leaders, grade this group and then give your grade to the grade secretary. Huh? Grade secretary, just consolidate them, get the average. Okay. I already told you the reminder. So, we're about to go. See you next meeting. Okay. Group 2, huh? Group 2, kayo naman, next meeting. Okay, po, sir. Noted. Okay, let's say goodbye to each other. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye. Good night. Goodbye. Sir. Good night. See you Bye, next week. Okay. Bye, Bye. 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 Bye.